I was around 12 years old when I knew I wanted him dead. I had friends, hobbies. I even enjoyed school for the most part. I remember every night, me and my mom sitting down for dinner. Just us two. It was only us two. I didn't have a father. He died when I was young. I wouldn't even know what that means, a father. You know, she had this look in her eyes as if she would never love another man until he showed up. He came into my life, just became a part of it. All I could picture him as is a shadow, a dark void. And that's when things started to go bad. Sure, it started out good. He'd take me to the movies, get me ice cream, do all that dad shit. Most people would call them dads. I call him a phony. I don't know what she saw in him. She didn't see what I saw. That's when she started to depend on him. Everything he said, she listened. He told her to cut her hours at work. She did it. He asked us to move in with him. All right. Then he started to get involved in my life. He always talked about fighting, boxing, street fighting, wrestling. As long as he was able to get his hands on someone or fists, that's all he wanted. That's all he wanted for me too. So he took me places, gyms, training centers. He even sized up a few kids for me, got us together, but that wasn't enough for him. It wasn't cutting it. So he started to teach me himself. You know, he dislocated my arm once in the living room fighting. My mom cried. He yelled. <laughs> but that was it. He took me to tryouts at school for the wrestling team. I wasn't half bad either. I won here and there, but I mostly lost. And that's when he would get angry. When I lost the car rides home, they were silent. I knew what was coming to me too. We'd get home, right through that door, right into the basement we'd go. We'd train hours at a time until the early morning. I was exhausted. My mom saw, but she chose to look away. She needed him now. She needed his support. I knew we couldn't go back to the way we were. It couldn't just be the two of us anymore. That's when I had to take matters in my own hands. A national championship was coming up, and there was prize money to be won. It wouldn't be enough to leave, but it was something. It was a start. The possibility thrilled me. I was actually doing pretty well. I qualified. I won my first three matches. I was in the semifinals. There was a moment when I caught him in the stands and I actually detected pride in his eyes. He was proud of me. Afterwards, he extended his hand to me and I could have shook it, <laughs> submitted to him give him everything he wanted. No, I punched him right between his eyes. Oh, it wasn't crippling or anything, but it was embarrassing. Oh, it was embarrassing. I remember just seeing him standing there holding his face while everyone watched me walk off. Oh God. That was better than winning any of those matches that day. 
I gotta tell you, it felt good. From that moment on, things changed. He stopped talking to me. He didn't even come to my matches anymore. I didn't care. If anything, I felt like I conquered something. You know, schools wanted me. Scouts were actually at my matches. Scholarships were being promised. This made me excited. It made my mom happy too. But not him. The phone would ring off the hook and it would just irritate him. Mail was just pouring in and he would scoff at it all. They wanted me, they wanted to represent me. I was a star, the comeback kid, the underdog, whatever they wanted to call me. He stuck around though. They argued about me a lot. That's when I started noticing bruises on her arm, her face. I asked her about them, but she denied everything. Like if nothing was happening, but I knew. So I confronted him. He just smiled. A cruel smile creeped on his face. And I lost it. Nothing before that has ever made me so angry. So I punched him. And I punched him, and punched him, and punched him until he was on the floor within seconds. And that first punch, that first punch, should have broke his nose. And every punch after that shattered his stupid face to pieces. My mom came running in, she tried to stop me, but she couldn't. No. She probably wanted this to happen for a long time. I mean, six years, it took a toll on me. I can't even imagine what it did to her. Oh, the anger just poured out of me. I couldn't stop myself. I had to finally just give in to her cries. She called the police right after that. I sat on the couch and waited. He just laid there barely moving. She just sat by his side, gently wiping the blood off his face. They didn't pronounce him dead until that weekend. So that's why, call my confession, and do whatever you want to do with me. Just know why I did it.